Well, lots to keep our eye on when it comes to Forex in terms of central banks, interest rate hikes that have happened, interest rate hikes still to come. Let's speak with Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets. Lachlan, good morning to you. When good morning, Nadine. At the, about the week that is um, almost under our belt here in Australia, uh, in terms of currencies, what is the most sort of significant move? Well, certainly the FOMC um, meeting on Wednesday is, is really changed the dynamics of the US dollar. That, that's that's the, the story, I think. And and with their guidance, well, I guess it wasn't in the statement, but in the presser afterwards, that um, they think they might have got to that neutral rate. Um, they're going to take it data dependently, meeting by meeting. So it's pretty much going to guarantee some uh, some volatility from from definitely the US dollar. Every every uh, news release that comes out from here to September, I think. Um, we did see it weaken a bit, and it's a down a bit again today, the US dollar. This this is very similar price action to what happens to the last three Fed meetings. So um, after a couple of days, it normally resumed its rally up. So we'll have to see on this one if this one's different to the last two. But um, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting move, that's for sure. You, you don't normally see currency go down when the central bank raises 75 basis points. Yeah, all right. And, and the Aussie dollar, I mean, relatively speaking, we've seen a little bit of support coming through. So it, what are the main drivers? Is it, is it the slight US dollar weakness that we've seen? Yeah, I think so. certainly the US dollar. I also think um, external economic factors are a big part, more so than the kind of the RBA channel. Um, I mean, the RBA channel, we've got the meeting next week. It looks like we'll get a 50 basis point there, but it's, it's all priced in and the futures market is just quite aggressive with um, the pricing in of rate hikes in the RBA. So if anything, they've been more likely to, to disappoint and be a bit of a headwind on the Aussie dollar. Um, this 70 level we're pressing up against today is, is very important. It's, it's a big psychological level. It's 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 held. It's it's been an important level for the last couple of years, either support or resistance. Um, if we're seeing it as resistance at the moment, we've tested it a couple of times the last couple of days and been rejected. But if we can get above that and and it turn into support, uh, we could see a little bit more up movement. But I, I think a stronger US dollar once. I don't think this this move in the US dollar is going to be sustained lower. I, I think it will turn around. Um, there's just too much economic uncertainty. There's there's too many um, tailwinds for the US dollar strength to um, to see it drop uh, any significant amount, I would think. Okay, so we've got the dollar crumbling versus the yen. Uh, we've got the CAD holding near a six-week high as investors there. I peak interest rates. I mean, I'm just looking at some of the headlines here. Sterling hits a three-month high versus a euro, but falling against the dollar. Am I right to... To, to say that there's more volatility creeping into forex markets? Uh, definitely. I mean, it's. Um, I mean, the ECB and the Fed now have basically given up on any forward projections and said it's going to be data dependent. So every every headline that comes out, you're going to see these moves. Um, the pound, in with regards to the pound, uh, the Bank of England next week, it's, it looks like a 50 basis point there. Um, but that's, that's fully priced in as well. So you're probably not going to see much move. But there's, there's, I think the headwinds of, say, the euro and the pound especially are um, a lot more uncertainty, geop geopolitical uncertainty over that part of the world with, with energy crisis, et cetera. And they, they're two economies that look like um, much more likely to, to fall into recession rather than the US. The US is teetering, but um, I, I think the, euro, the European Bank and the Bank of England need to get any rate hikes out now um, because come September they might not be able to justify it with the, the economic backdrop. Yeah. Now, Lachlan, um, where else are you placing your focus? Um, I know that Bitcoin has totally, well, has largely been moving in line with risk sentiment and it's been such a big week in terms of equities reacting to the Fed and equities reacting to the U.S. quarterlies. What else is sort of driving sentiment, if anything, in that uh, in that cryptoverse? <sighs> Bitcoin um, has been interesting because, yes, it has had moments where it literally just follows Tesla stock almost, like a, like a high beta tech stock. But um, there was a real battle at that kind of twenty to $18,000 level in the last few weeks. Uh, saw a lot of volume come in and buyers as sellers. So the hodlers won in the end and we've, we've had bounce off it. Um, whether that's sustained or not really, I think it's going to depend on uh, equity risk sentiment. Um, I mean, we did have the bad news about Coinbase having an SEC probe that didn't it pushed it down below the support briefly, but it came back. So it is showing a lot of strength there. I, I think one interesting thing with crypto too, the way I'm trading at the moment anyway, is um, is Bitcoin versus Ether. Rather than take a position against the US dollar, I, I, 
I like the the range it's in, and we've seen Ether outperform Bitcoin quite a bit. I think it's under under fourteen um, Ethers to a to a Bitcoin now. So um, that's a one a good one to have a look at if you want to trade crypto without too much of the volatility. The, the trading a crypto against the crypto is uh, what I find. Um, a little bit less stressful anyway. Interesting. Okay. So in terms of the Aussie, we're watching that 70 cent level, psychologically important. Can it turn from resistance into support? Lachlan, yeah. if you had to call it, what do you think the RBA will do on Tuesday? 50 or 75 basis points? Oh, I, I think 50. I mean, the, the, the bond market, I looked at the 30 days this morning. They they're, think they're pricing about 41 or 42 basis points, which gives it about an 85% chance of 50. I don't think they'll go 75. Um, but 50 is pretty much a definite. And from there, we'll have to see how they go. They've, they've got a lot of uh, catching up to do to keep up with the, the interbank futures, what they're predicting the interest rate will be by the end of the year anyway.